Hello everyone. So in today's film I'm going to be talking to you about highlighting for the very fairest of skin tone, like my own, but I will be focusing more so on powder formulas. And some are cream formulas, some are liquid formulas, a lot of very shimmery bright tones. And before I begin, I'm going to be hosting a masterclass and meet and greet here in London very, very soon to receive information regarding tickets, location, time, etc. I will be exclusively sending a notification out via my newsletter and to sign on to that, just head over to www.johnmclean.co.uk forward slash masterclass. I shall also leave the applicable link within the description of this film. And thank you very much to everybody that has signed up so far. Now, highlighter is a marvellous product, and I think that there is a highlighter for everybody. There's a type of highlighter that can suit everybody. But in today's film, I'm going to be mainly focusing around highlighter for the very fairest of skin tones, and certainly shades that are suitable for my own skin tone. Of course, I'm going to talk about the different types of highlighters and why I think they are better for one type of very pale skin and for another. Some of these shades will be applicable for everybody. Some of them I know work on darker skin tones. Some of them I use on darker skin tones. But I will explain the philosophy behind why I pick certain colours. I think when highlighting your skin, of course it is your own personal preference. What sort of shade you might like, what sort of shade might suit you best. I think on the very palest of skin tones, depending on your undertone, some shades tend to suit one undertone better than the other. So I tend to find that the more artificial tones, like the iridescent purples and blues, do tend to flatter my own skin more so than, say, a colder white highlighter, something that's very, very shimmery white shade or a silvery shade. I don't think flatter my skin that marvellously, whereas products that have a blue undertone to them or a pink or a purple look fantastic on my skin tone because my undertones are cold, whereas my sister happens to have more of a yellower undertone. She is very pale like me, but her skin is more yellow based, it's warmer in its undertone. So the white shades and the silvery shades and to a degree pink shades look absolutely fantastic on her skin tone. I personally do not like to wear highlighters that are pure white. Sometimes I wear them within tutorials because they look absolutely fantastic under very bright studio studio lighting and of course on camera. However, in person, I do tend to find that they make my skin almost look a little bit dirty. It isn't very enhancing. I tend to find that when I apply a white shimmery highlighter, the rest of my skin starts to look slightly darker and almost a little bit murky. I don't necessarily think pure white highlighters look most flattering on me. Ones that are purple or blue are usually the best. A lot of the reflex blues and purples and pinks look absolutely fantastic on my skin tone. So I do tend to prefer not to go for the white shimmery tones. Also, the very pale yellows don't necessarily look that flattering on my skin tone. Some one or two do. Of course, they look very flattering on somebody with more yellow undertones, like my sister, for example. So the golden tones are more incumbent with her undertones, so they flatter her more so, whereas my skin is the opposite. So some of the highlighters for which that I'm going to show to you may scare you slightly, they may daunt you a little bit, but they just melt into the skin. They look so flattering on the skin. And of course, it can be a little bit daunting putting a blue or a purple or a pink highlighter on the skin. But once you try it, it can actually look fantastic against your pale complexion. There's a pile of highlighters right next to me. It is a little daunting as there are so many of them and it'll probably take me several centuries to go through them all, which isn't necessarily a problem for me as I've been alive a lot longer than that. But for most of you, I think you will probably have died by then. So I have swatched upon the tips of my fingers the types of shades that I shall be showcasing to you. As you can see, they are very iridescent. There's a blue type of shade, there's a pinky purpley shade, there is a very purpley shade, very reflex, and then there's another blue shade. These are the kinds of shades that I will be showcasing to you today, and these are the types of tones I think look most flattering on the very fairest of skin tones. I know that there are many of you with fairer skin tones that are probably slightly frightened at the thought of putting something so bright and colourful on the skin, but it actually does look fantastic. Now, I shall not be swatching every product today, because there are so many of them, 
and my own swatches always look a little bit pedestrian. So I'm going to talk you through each of them instead. To start off with, I'm going to be taking a liquid highlighter. This one is Strobe Cream by MAC Cosmetics. This product works fantastic as a cheek highlighter, best applied before powder product goes upon the cheeks, but it looks fantastic on the skin. Also photographs beautifully under flash photography. It's great on the body as well. It also has an ever so slight purpley pink tone to it. The next products are also by MAC Cosmetics. These are loose pigments. The first one is Reflex Transparent Pink and the second is Reflex Blue. These tones are absolutely gorgeous on the skin. They look great on the eyes, they look great on the body. They're just beautiful colors. Very, very bright, very sparkly. The sparkle is also quite finely milled, so they're not like glitter. They're just a very, very beautiful pigment. However, it used to be so difficult to be able to get shades like this several years ago. So the market has become oversaturated with colors like this in pressed formulas, in liquid formulas, in cream formulas, and in loose formulas like these are. It used to be really difficult to source colors like this, but now the market has them in abundance. And I have been using these tones for years. They're absolutely fantastic. And all of the products for which that I'm going to mention to you here today, I would thoroughly recommend that you try them on in the store or try them out, see what the texture is like, see what it's like on, try them on, before you purchase any of them in order to gain the best results for you. And I would use to apply these all through the center and the high points of my face. It gives the skin the most beautiful sheen and certainly under light, it looks incredible in daylight, in night light. The only thing I do tend to find with the more pink tones, the more purpley pink tones, because these products do tend to be more duochrome, certainly in the more purpley pink shades, you do tend to find that the actual product might have a hint of green to it. So the Reflex Transparent Pink by MAC Cosmetics will make the skin look really purple, but in some lights it might also give you a green cast. I do tend to find this with some products that are more purple. The next product is also by MAC Cosmetics, and this is the MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade Shivering White. Now, even though this product is sold as a powder foundation, it is absolutely fantastic to almost lighten and correct the shade of your foundation and your face, but it can also be used as a highlighter under the eyes and through the center of the face and possibly on the cheekbone if you want a matte white highlighter. I use this product just to highlight underneath the eyes and this area, so down the side of the nose and underneath the eyes and upward, just to brighten that area. I use a very faint amount of it, but it is great for that. This is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Pink Freeze, which is an absolutely beautiful shimmery pink color. It looks absolutely fantastic on both warm and cooler pale skin tones. A very similar product to this, which I was unable to get because it was out of stock, is Jeffree Star's Skin Frost in the shade Princess Cut. As they look quite similar, I think the Princess Cut might be a little bit lighter, but they're relatively similar. The next product I'm going to mention is by Inglot, and this is a very finely milled shimmer shade, and it's in a press compact. I just attempted to remove it from the compact, but Inglot make their packaging bomb-proof, so I struggled to get it out, but I shall definitely leave the shade number and name within the description of this film. Even though white highlighters don't necessarily suit me. It looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. Another product by Inglot is their Body Sparkles in the shade 53. This is an absolutely beautiful reflex pinky purple shade. It's one of those beautiful ones. The pot is a little bit on the small side, but it's an absolutely beautiful, fantastic product. Very similar to MAC's Reflex Pink. The next product is Static by Elamasca, which is incredibly similar to MAC Cosmetics Reflex Transparent Pink. And if I open it up, you should be able to see the shade. It's very, very beautiful. And it comes as a loose pigment. I wish it came as a pressed one. Powder eyeshadow in the shade Cascade, also by Elamasca, absolutely fantastic. I use this in a lot of my films. It gives the skin the most beautiful blue sheen and it's quite subtle but also buildable. I absolutely love this product. Very similar to Static. It's almost as if though they are sisters, one being more on the blue side and one being more on the purpley pink. But I am a great lover of this product. Another Elamasca product is the Powder Blusher in the shade Intrigue, which is a pure matte white. This can actually look great for just highlighting the central region of the face, even if your skin is a little bit darker than mine 
mind, it can just brighten up ever so slightly, a faint amount of it. I use it in similar ways for which that I use the Studio Fix in the shade Shivering White, but I do tend to avoid using this shade under the eyes, as it is a little bit more powdery in texture. Now, it may not be that useful for me to share this with you. This is also an Alamasca product, sadly discontinued. It's an absolutely beautiful shade, though. It is one of their Illuminine oils in the shade Volt. They discontinued this product years ago, but the shade was absolutely gorgeous. I've kept it in my archive as a souvenir. The next highlighter for which that I would like to mention is a liquid highlighter, and this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Skin Perfector in the shade Pearl. They do many shades for different skin tones. This is a fantastic product, as it just adds the most subtle sheen to the skin. You can use it all over, or you can use it just in the high points, just to add a little bit of sheen. It photographs fantastically, I can definitely verify that. It looks absolutely mesmerizing under flash photography. And I use this product more so within my kit as opposed to on myself. The next product is also by Becca and it is the Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Pearl, which is a powder formula. It's an absolutely beautiful shimmery shade. It's a very finely milled. Of course, this comes in many shades for different skin tones. It looks absolutely fantastic on the skin, even though I don't tend to wear white highlighters. And this shade is a slightly creamy, silvery shade. It's not a pure cold white. It's almost an off-white. The next product is by Fenty Beauty and it is the matchstick in the shade Confetti. Now, I absolutely love this product because it's very, very dry. So you can apply it to the body and it looks fantastic. And I, of course, wear black in many shades. So I do not like to wear products that are incredibly emollient on the body as it transfers and saturates into the clothing. Whereas this product is quite dry, so you can apply it to the body if you have your skin on show. Of course, the shimmer does go onto the clothes, but it doesn't saturate into the clothes the way an oil does. But due to its dryness, I don't think it's necessarily that best on top of set foundation. The next product is by Kylie Cosmetics, and it is one of their loose highlighting powders, and it is in the shade Wisteria. And it is this absolutely beautiful pinky silver shade. Even though it is a little bit more silvery, it does look absolutely beautiful on my skin. It also looks great on the body. The next products are powder formulas, and this is the Dual Chromatic Illuminating Powder by NYX. The first one is Twilight Tint, which is more of a blue, and the second is Lavender Steel, which is, of course, more pinky and purple. These, of course, give the most beautiful sheen to the skin, but they are a little bit more sheer. You definitely have to build them up on the skin. I very much like both of them, and of course, they are a more affordable option. NYX also provide a stick illuminator. This is the cream emollient version. The first bluer shade is Electric Invasion, and the second is Mermaid Armor. These look absolutely beautiful on the skin. The next highlighters for which that I would like to mention are by Bourjois, and they are pressed powder eyeshadows. Very beautiful, very shimmery, and look marvelous on the skin. These are shades 90, 03, and 11. 90, of course, is a more pearly white, Shade 3 and 11 are more pinky purple. Shade 3 is almost a silvery purple. This actually looks really good on my skin tone. And shade 11 is a more purpley shade. It looks absolutely beautiful on the skin as well. They're quite sheer, so they look really subtle and beautiful on the skin. This product is by Supercover, and it is one of the highlights in the shade Moon Gold. It's a very pale gold with a slight undertone of green, just an ever so slight undertone of green. Another Supercover product is White Sheen. Now, I have already decanted this into an empty Alamasca loose powder packaging. And this product, even though it is white, actually looks quite good on my skin tone. But there's a slight yellowness through it and there's a slight blueness. So it's almost as if though there are two counteractive undertones within it. So it looks great on the skin, particularly on the body. This is a loose product and it is by Cryolan and it is one of their Glamour Sparks and it is in the shade Purple. A very similar color to Static by Alamasca, MAC Cosmetics Reflex Transparent Pink, as well as the Body Shimmer by Inglot in the shade 53. They're all very similar, but this looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. The next product is by Belly Perry Cosmetics and it is in the shade Snowflake. It is probably one of the white Brightest and most brightest iridescent loose highlighter that I have. It looks great on the skin and of course on the body. A very little bit of it goes a long way. The next product is by Laura Geller and it is one of their baked gelato swirl illuminator in the shade Diamond Dust. And I would describe this product as being a pressed version of the MAC Cosmetics Reflex Pink. Now this is a beautiful duochrome purpley pink sheen color. It's absolutely beautiful. It's quite strong and deep. You might also be able to see in the pan, but certainly in person, if you look at this product, it definitely has a greenness to the shade. So a lot of these reflex purples and pinks do tend to have a green 
base to them. The next product is a very iridescent blue and it is by Sugar Pill in the shade Ice Angel. It's a very similar shade to Elamasca's Cascade, a little cooler and a little less sparkly but very beautiful on the skin, quite subtle. It's quite shimmery and the shimmer is very refined looking as it doesn't seem to have any sparkle in it and these blue tones do tend to just melt into the cooler paler skin tones like my own. The next brand that I would like to talk about is The Balm and this is the Mary Luminizer. Now of course this shade is a little bit too dark for me as it is a pale gold but if your skin is more yellow based and fair this will definitely work for you. The next products are by Topshop and these were a recent discovery of mine. They're absolutely beautiful and this is a powder highlighter. It is their chameleon highlighter. The first one is Freshwater and the second is Sea Witch. Freshwater is a more silvery white tone, very beautiful on the skin, whereas Sea Witch is pink, but quite silvery. It's very beautiful on the skin also. It is definitely a silver with a pink undertone. The pink is quite faint within the product. They also have these beautiful powder eyeshadows in the shade Beauty Queen and Silver Fox. Beauty Queen is a duochrome pinky purple shade. It's absolutely beautiful. Whereas Silver Fox, as the name describes, is a silvery white shade. Topshop also does this absolutely beautiful shade, which is powder eyeshadow in the shade Hologram. I absolutely love this product. It's a brighter version of Cascade. It is definitely a duochrome chrome between pink and blue. It's almost as if you combined MAC Cosmetics Reflex Blue and Reflex Transparent Pink together but had a little bit more blue in it. It's absolutely beautiful. The next products are by MUA in the shades Palescent Sheen and Peach Diamond. These are actually two favourites of mine as they look absolutely beautiful on the skin. They just seem to melt into my skin and they're very affordable. I think they're only £3 each. So they're both fantastic. I use these on myself. I also use them within my kit but if you find all of these crazy colours quite frightening. I would thoroughly recommend that you try Peach Diamond first of all. The next product is also by MUA and it's almost like a loose version of the Pearlescent Sheen and this is one of their Prism Loose Powder Highlighters in the shade Oceanic Wonder and you can see what that looks like against the black. It's an absolutely beautiful pale iridescent blue. I love this product on the cheeks, on the bodies, everywhere. It's absolutely gorgeous. The next product that I'd like to mention is a loose eyeshadow pigment by Furless Cosmetics in the shade Obnoxious. A rather strange name for a very lovely product and I absolutely love their branding and their packaging. I think it is a very innovative use of plastic and you just open the top of it like so and then there's a little cap and the product is inside. Now this shade Obnoxious looks like a bright pink in its packaging but it is also a duochrome product so it can be used as a highlighter or a blush. Of course it has a pink tone but it also has a blue iridescence in it. As you can always kill two birds with one stone as this product as it can be used almost as a blusher and a highlighter and it's very beautiful on the skin. And before I get on to the last two highlighters for which that I'm going to showcase I must mention the Nukes Dry Oil. This is a fantastic fantastic oil for applying to the body. It works on all skin tones. I know that they do another one that's more suited for darker skin tones as it has a slight gold and bronze pigment in it but this works on darker skin tones as well, the regular one. But it works on all skin tones. It's great on the limbs, on the shoulders, on the back, anywhere. It just makes the skin come alive and look healthy and it photographs fantastically. The next product is by Jeffree Star Cosmetics and it is the Skin Frost Pro Palette in the shade Platinum Ice. So when you open it up, there are six shades inside. This shade right here is Lavender Snow, which is more of a purple shimmer. This shade is Canary Bling, which is a yellow, almost a pale buttercup yellow. This shade right here is Glacier, which I'm wearing today. It's a silver tone that's almost borderlining on being slightly blue. It's very pretty. Then up here we have a very pale gold. This is Ice Cold. This shade right here is Alien Ice, which is a pale greeny yellow tone. This shade right here is a duochrome. The others are all shimmers. This one is a duochrome and it is in the shade Pink Chill. And I would describe it almost as being a cross between the MUA Peach Diamond and the Laura Geller Diamond Dust. It's almost in between those two shades. However, Lavender Snow, which is this darkest shade right here, might be a little bit too dark for my own skin tone but all of the shades are shimmer tones. Now the next product is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild Glow Kit which on first appearance probably looks quite similar to the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Platinum Ice Skin Frost Pro Palette but they are very different. In the Moonchild Palette you have an iridescent blue shade right here which is Blue Ice. Right here we have the shade Star which is a very pale greyish silver. 
This shade right here is Purple Horseshoe, which is a very iridescent blue-based lilac. Here we have Blue Moon, which is quite a silvery-based lilac tone. This shade is Lucky Clover, which is a very pale iridescent green. Then we have Pink Heart, which is a dual chrome color. It's quite similar to the Jeffree Star Pink Chill, as well as the MUA Peach Diamond and the Laura Geller Diamond Dust. All of these shades will look great on the very palest of skin tones. And when you hold the two together, of course, in appearance and in shade range, they are quite similar. However, the formula is totally different. The Anastasia ones are more refined in the formula. The formula is more thin and they're more iridescent. Of course, there's vibrancy within the colors. However, with the Jeffree Star cosmetic ones, they tend to make the skin look wet, which isn't a criticism, it is simply an observation. So even though there is similarity within both palettes and color scheme, the texture and formulas are very different and the colors vary greatly. As there are blue tones within the Anastasia palette, however, no blue tones within the Jeffree Star palette. And of course, there is an obvious size difference. I can actually measure both of them right now as I always carry a tape measure with me wherever I go. This one is by Stanley. Stanley are very famous for their knives, the Stanley knives. It may seem odd to many of you to know that I carry a tape measure with me wherever I go, but I'm always looking at furniture. I can smell an antique shop a mile away. One recognizes oneself. After all, I am a bit of an antique anyway. So I'm always taking measurements of things. So the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Platinum Ice Palette measures at approximately 16.5 centimeters in length and 11.5 in width. The Anastasia Moonchild Palette measures at almost 14.5 centimeters in length and 10 centimeters in width. I hope that will give you an idea of scale of each of the palettes. They're similar, but both quite different. And of course, applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. And in today's film, I really wanted to cover a huge variety of price point, of product, and of shade to hopefully give you clearance when picking a highlighter either for your kit, for yourself, or for somebody else. And I also hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye!